The M4 Mac Mini is one of the best Macs you can buy right now, and it's both one of the best, but also worst when it comes to value. So today I wanna to run through a bit of a buyer's guide for the Mac Mini and run through which upgrades are worth it, depending on your needs, and when factoring your budget, which upgrades are worth uh, either skipping or maybe just doing yourself. And also taking that into account, I wanted to look at the actual accessories I choose to use with my own Mac Minis. Now, I want to wait until the whole like Black Friday thing was over because I just didn't want it to come over as just a, you know, shilling, whatever was the best discounts that week. So I'll cover those products off as well. Now, quick request before we start. According to YouTube, 95% of people that watch these videos aren't actually subscribed to the channel. So if you do enjoy this, if it's useful to you in any way, uh, please do consider subscribing. Actually, someone literally commented on the last video saying they are not subscribing because apparently YouTubers are rich enough already. But this December, uh, I currently only have one video sponsored by a brand but I still have to pay, you know, everyone's salary here. So yeah, it really can help. And thank you very much. So firstly, listed on Apple's own website, there are four different configurations of the M4 Mac Mini. You've got three M4 Mac Minis and one M4 Pro Mac Mini. Now those three M4 Mac Minis are just the most popular configurations of the Mac Mini. I've said Mac Mini far too many times already in this video. There is the base spec with 16 gig of unified memory and a 256 gig SSD. Uh, then there's one with an upgrade to a 512 gig SSD. And then there's the next one, which is a 512 gig SSD, but also an upgrade to 24 gig of unified memory. And then lastly, there is the M4 Pro Mac Mini, which in addition to the more powerful M4 Pro chip, starts with 24 gig of unified memory, a 512 gig SSD, and you also get Thunderbolt 5 on this model as well over the Thunderbolt 4 from the basic M4. So to get you started, and this really applies to any Mac, but of course we're focusing on the M4 Mac Mini here in this video. So let's start with the memory because that is an area that many people often overspend on, like vastly overspend on because, you know, because it's soldered on. Like we all worry that by not getting enough now, we're gonna make it really difficult for us later on when we realize we actually should have bought more memory. Now the base spec M4 Mac Mini now comes with 16 gig of memory. And for most home users, this is just fine. Like it's actually what I went for with my M4 Mac Mini, which I keep at home. I do uh, web browsing, emails, writing documents, even some like gaming as much as you can do on a Mac. Basically, if you don't ever dive into anything outside of those basic tasks, you don't really need more than 16 gig of memory. I'm even using VMware to run a virtual machine on my home M4 Mac Mini, which runs my home assistant, like home automation system. So they really are like really capable machines at just 16 gig of memory. Now I'm gonna run into my actual specific use case later on. So maybe just stick around to hear how that works as well. Now, if you sometimes dabble in some uh, video editing, graphic design, uh, maybe coding, then that's when you want to consider bumping this up to 24 gig. And then for 32 gig, this is really if you're wanting to do, you know, lots of multi-track editing. So, you know, loads of audio tracks, loads of video tracks going on. Uh, apps like the Creative Cloud Suite, which can often consume a lot more memory with large files. Now, 32 gig is the maximum amount of unified memory you can get on the base M4 model. And to get above that, you have to then upgrade to the M4 Pro Mac Mini. And really for anything over 32 gig, my advice to most people is that you just don't need it. Like, particularly because the memory upgrades don't come anywhere near as cheap. Like as always, like Apple's upgrade pricing for both for both memory and storage is to a certain extent absolutely extortionate. So honestly, just save your money on unnecessarily upgrading your memory because it's a vastly expensive upgrade that most people won't even notice. Unless, I'll caveat that, you know that you need that extra memory. I think if you're sat there going, mm, I'm not sure if I really do. If you know because the, you know, the apps and tools you're using need the extra memory, then you know that you're going to pay the extra for it. Maybe you're running like multiple virtual machines and need to allocate memory to each of them. Maybe you're running like a video production company and you spend the entire day in Final Cut Pro or Premiere or maybe doing development work where again, you know it will eat through memory. I think if you need more than 32 gig of memory, you will already know and then have your reasons why if you need why you'll need more than 32 gig. But my advice for, again, most people here, generalizing here is 16 gig is great. 24 gig is if you start to dabble more uh, into like intense memory consuming apps and then 32 gig for you know, power users, I would say. But I would even classify myself as a power user and I'm using 16 gig. So just take that as you will. Now, speaking of saving money, let's talk storage. Now here is where you can potentially save a lot of money with unnecessary upgrades, but sometimes, Unfortunately, 
it is needed. So the base M4 comes with 256 gig of onboard storage, and you can upgrade to a maximum of two terabytes of onboard storage. Now, again, most people, 256 gig will be probably fine. Like again, on my home Mac mini, I went for 256 gig, but do I regret it? Mm, maybe. Well, take the 256 gig SSD and reduce that to 245 gig of actual usable storage that's available to you. Then you need to remove 20 gig for the operating system, another 24 gig for the system data, another 30 gig in my situation here for applications. And so I'm actually left with around about 170 gig of you know, actual usable space that I can choose to do something with. So again, if you have anything that's over 170 gig in size and that must reside on the local SSD, then you do kind of have to upgrade the local SSD and pay the Apple rates. Now for me, that is my Home Assistant virtual machine, which must sit on the local SSD because when the Mac restarts, it does try to boot Home Assistant, but if it is on the SSD, it can't boot it because it runs before the Mac realizes the SSDs are connected. So it just kind of fails to boot and then doesn't really retry it from there. Now, my other constraint is in my photos library, which is over 100 gig in size by now, if I want to download everything onto my Mac like locally. Now, again, you can move this onto an external SSD, but when doing so, you lose the ability to search your library using spotlights, which I don't think I've ever done before. But it's just worth mentioning that because that tells you kind of it pops up when you try and do that. Now, the other thing I will kind of mention here comes after I was chatting with uh, Daniel from Zone of Tech during a recent trip to Amsterdam. Now, apparently Apple intelligence features can be restricted if you store your photo library on an external drive. Now, I'm not running any of the, the beta software on my Macs right now, so I can't actually test this, but I can use the cleanup tool to erase things from photos and I can still search by just you know describing the images but just be aware that when moving your photos library to an external drive it may cause issues further down the line with Apple intelligence now having said that I have the 256 gig SSD in my home Mac I have quite a few apps installed I have my photo stored in iCloud I have all of my documents stored in iCloud uh, there's Google Drive there too for my work stuff. Uh, I even have that virtual machine running, which I managed to make a bit smaller after I realized I needed to make it smaller to make it fit. And I still have now just under 100 gig of free space left. So I do think that 256 gig is achievable for most people. But again, it might also require a bit of effort to you know stop yourself from going over that limit. And then if you opt for the M4 Pro, then you're starting at 512 gig anyway. So you know, that's even better. But if you look at Apple's upgrade pricing like here in the UK to go from 256 gig to 512 costs 200 pounds, whereas a quick look on Amazon and you can pick up a crucial X10 Pro two terabyte SSD for the less for, which is silly, for less than Apple's 512 gig storage. Like a third, a third, do maths properly, a quarter of the storage. And at almost half of that price if you wait for uh, Black Friday or like Prime Day discounts. And those SSDs, they're fast. They're as fast as the internal SSD on the Mac mini. It's not like you're getting you know, slower performance or anything. You can even pick up a two terabyte M2 chip, which might look scary, but if you pop one inside of an enclosure, like one of these Ugreen or uh, Acasis enclosures, I'll link them down below, then you can get even faster storage at a fraction of the cost. And then if you are on a M4 Pro Mac Mini, then you also get support for Thunderbolt 5, which means you can hook up even faster drives. Now, there aren't many available yet. This is quite a new thing that's coming out, but OWC currently have a two terabyte and a four terabyte drive. And considering four terabytes of onboard like Mac Mini storage is priced at a whopping 1,200 British pounds, eight terabytes, it's the price of a car. It's like £2,400 here compared to OWC's meager, I mean, it still feels expensive, but meager $600 or around, so that's like £480 for four terabytes. You could buy two of the four terabyte OWC drives and still have over half of your money left over. It's just insane the premium that Apple charge for these storage upgrades. So that is the uh, expensive upgrades out of the way. Now, next is the CPU. Now for the base model, it is what it is, but for the M4 Pro, you do have an option to pay another £200 to get an extra two CPU cores and four GPU cores. And from my experience so far, as someone who owns both M4 Mac Pro models here, we've got two different models here, and use them for video editing, there is little to no difference between these two machines in our experience. Now, in some cases, the technically slower machine, my machine that's the slower of the two, actually rendered and exported videos 
faster than the other higher spec model with more memory and the higher CPU. So again, unless you know that you need the upgraded CPU, you really don't need to pay the extra. Like it's really, really not noticeable. And that's from someone who is using them every single day and doing some fairly intensive tasks on them. And then like, as we scroll to the bottom of the list of upgrades, it's the one that most people will probably skip to be honest, the upgrade from one gig to 10 gig ethernet. Now, this is one that I needed for my studio where I have a, I've got a NAS drive here, which is basically a rack of hard disks, which provide me with a huge amount of storage for all of my video footage. That also has a 10 gig connection. And I actually thought we'd be able to edit directly from the NAS, from my Mac minis, 10 gig to the NAS, but it's not quite fast enough with the NAS and the particular disk set that we've got here. We're actually gonna use the NAS drive, but then use proxies locally, which then may of course increase the amount of storage that we might want either locally or via SSD, but that will fix our problem there. So with that said, which Macs did we buy and why? So like I said, I actually bought all three models of Mac. So just let me tell you what I bought, why I bought them and any regrets and changes I would make on those three Macs. So Mac number one is the M4 Mac Mini. Now I bought the, the base model, the cheapest one, no upgrades, and that was replacing my existing M1 Mac Mini at home. Now this is being used for my, uh, my Plex library, movies, videos, photos. Uh, it's also used to run Home Assistant. Now I use it when I work from home. So, you know, email, web, social media, YouTube, just, you know, general work type stuff. Uh, then I've also created two accounts on there for my two kids. So they have a good machine to do their, you know, schoolwork, homework. I'm also trying to teach them to touch type at the moment, which is pretty cool. And, and that all works really, really well. Like I ended up running Home Assistant locally from the Max SSD, like I said, and then hooked up two external SSDs to store all the, the photos, the videos. Uh, and actually one of those actually uh, weirdly temporarily failed recently. It's now working again. But thankfully, I actually had it all backed up to Backblaze. This isn't like a sponsor thing. This just actually happened. So I thought I'd mention it. Um, back to all my Mac Mini up to Backblaze and was able to restore that to a, a new SSD that I got because the old one's obviously on its way out uh, and just got it working in a matter of like hours, I think it was. Now, I also have an APC UPS backup battery, which gives my Mac around uh, like 30 minutes of battery power if there's a power cut. And it's hooked up to a Samsung M8 smart monitor, which works great. Again, no issues with that. Uh, I also have it sat on this anchor desk shelf slash docking station thing, just because I had it lying around, just to give me a few extra USB ports, a wireless charger, and just a few extra, you know, just expansion on the Mac Mini because there's not many ports on the back there. Uh, Logitech MX keys, Apple Magic Mouse 2. Yes, with the silly USB-C charging port underneath thing. And all in all, I am very happy with this decision. Although I would potentially upgrade the base SSD from 256 to 512 gig in future if I bought it again. Now the next Mac Mini is the base spec M4 Pro Mac Mini with 10 gig of ethernet, one terabyte of storage, and this was one that I bought for day-to-day -day work stuff here in the studio, but I also wanted the Pro chip in case I ever needed to do you know, any video editing, any audio editing work. Now, since that's literally obviously what we do here, that kind of makes sense. And also just for any time my video editor needs to use this machine, then I know that it's got a powerful enough chip to work on. Now I have this hooked up to the gigantic 57-inch uh, G9 Samsung screen via HDMI. Uh, it's also hooked up into the Focusrite Scarlett Solo interface, so I can use a good microphone for video calls and those kind of things. That is also hooked up to the Edifier speakers I've got. Uh, there's an Insta360 Link 2 camera as my webcam. And then I also have the latest uh, CowDigit TS4 dock, again, just to give me a few more ports, uh, as well as the SD card slot, since there's no SD card slot on the Mac Mini. Very, very much overkill for, you know, why I have the dock here. You know, I literally have it for the SD card slot and like one or two USB ports. I actually recently upgraded from the CowDigit TS3 Plus, which I've actually been using since like five years ago now, to the TS4, which CowDigit sent over when I asked if they would be interested in sponsoring this video. Huge thank you for that. Now it is such a solid dock for those of you who need to expand the number of ports you get on, well, any device, including the Mac Mini, of course. The TS4 gives you an additional 18 ports, so a ton of USB-A, uh, USB-C ports, uh, it hooks up to your Mac via Thunderbolt 4, which can also charge your device if it's something like a MacBook Air or MacBook Pro, and then gives you things like a display port to hook up an extra monitor, uh, two and a half gig ethernet for you if you wanted faster network connectivity, and of course, the front mounted SD and micro SD card slots. You've got headphone, USB ports, just giving you quick access to the essentials. And so even though I said that this dock is probably overkill for my current use case, 
it is such a reliable way for me to connect all of my extra accessories for my Mac, you know, my webcam, my audio interface, video streaming device, wired keyboard, uh, Logitech USB dongle, as well as connect my MacBook Pro up to power and display all in one cable. So yeah, this continues to be one of the best and the most reliable docks I've used. And I'm a super happy customer. And you can grab one using the link in the description down below. Uh, Keychron uh, K3 keyboard, I think it is. Uh, Logitech MX Master 3 mouse. Totally happy. Absolutely happy with this purchase. Uh, zero regrets whatsoever. And then we have the third Mac Mini. And this again is the high spec, uh, but it's the higher of the spec M4 Pro Mac Minis. It's got a one terabyte SSD, uh, 48 gig of unified memory and 10 gig uh, Ethernet on that one. And again, this one I'm, I would say I'm mostly happy with. Before that, check out the latest Ugreen Uno series of chargers, which make a great gift during the holiday season with their cute emoji faces and screen. The screen will show the real time charging status with different expressions, which will make your charging experience more delightful. From the 100 watt charger, which fast charges everything you need to bring with you for day to day or when traveling, to the 15 watts two in one magnetic charger with their fun robot design and hassle free charging. Ugreen, have you covered? These will all be linked down below along with a link to take part in Ugreen's £34,000 giveaway and a huge thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this portion of the video. The third Mac Mini, again, it's for my videographer. So, you know, he edits our short form content. And I just kind of wanted to make sure that he has like the best machine possible outside of upgrading to a Mac Studio because that's kind of getting to being overkill for what we need. We're not like a Hollywood studio production house, even though like YouTubers use Mac Studios all the time now because they're kind of affordable. Anyway, I digress. Now he was already using the M1 Pro MacBook Pro and the M4 Pro Mac Mini, it's a mouthful, um, is almost twice as fast when exporting videos. So that is a very, very decent upgrade. But I don't think I should have upgraded uh, getting the uh, CPU and GPU, uh, even the memory upgrade. I'm questioning whether it's worth it. After, again, doing some tests between R2 machines, mine actually came out on top some of the time. So yeah, I would have probably saved the money instead, um, but, his machine is hooked up to a Dell 40 inch Thunderbolt screen. Really, really nice. It's got two and a half gig ethernet in there just in case you wanted to skip the 10 gig upgrade, which is still faster than one gig, which also has the CalDigit dock connected, uh, Logitech MX keys, uh, MX Master 3 mouse again. Great mouse, great keyboard combination. And aside from the CPU upgrade and memory, mostly happy with that purchase. Now, in terms of these like, storage upgrades, I'm gonna leave a link down below to my recommendations. I've been testing like all of the currently available SSDs recently, including some of them which have actually failed on me, like I said. Um, so yeah, Backblaze is like $9 a month for unlimited data, online backup, well, well worth it. And given a few of the uh, SSDs that I have been testing have actually recently failed, very, very grateful I had everything backed up to that service as well. So with that said, I hope this video was useful to you and I will see you in the next video. Cheers, bye-bye.